You're tuned in to Agriculture Today, and we begin our Friday show, as we usually do, with a grain market update. And as always, we're joined with K-State grain economist, Dan O'Brien. Dan, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Shelby. Hopping right in, let's talk about futures. You know, it's a... Uh... It's a time of real thought in my in my view in, in terms of what what futures prices have been doing, what's affecting them now, what what lies in front of us yet uh, seasonally that that's that's that will have to be dealt with. Uh, recent trends, of course, are, are all at play that the news up front has been the Kansas wheat tour. And, and I think most Kansas Kansas producers, given the results that came out of that tour and, and the, the negativity in terms of production, it's come out of there. They're, they're probably surprised to see on yesterday's futures that that we'd seen a down day, a pretty hefty down day uh, Again, uh, July wheat. Uh, July 23, closing down 28 and a half cents, uh, September 27, and then uh, uh, similarly going on. So, um, so that's something, and we'll we'll talk about that in, in a little bit as to what what's what that means, why why the futures respond that way, and and uh, sometimes it's hard to understand what what the, some economists have called the animal spirits of the of the futures markets and why why they responded to something the way they did. But when we look at the at the at the sound numbers, uh, there there's much to be concerned about, and 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 I think an actual harvested amount to to be dealt with later on. Uh, fut- soybean futures uh, were. Uh, we're down about three cents July. The lead lead contract July CME soybeans thirteen thirty three. Then we're starting to see pretty uh, pretty extreme drop offs uh, as we as we move on from July at thirteen thirty three August twelve sixty nine September twelve oh three uh, November actually moving a little bit higher at twelve fifty. So so the market's uh, probably anticipating a. Uh, well, they're anticipating the lowest prices out there, no doubt tied in with the uh, Brazilian harvest final availability out there in September. But by the time they move to November, they're actually actually having some uh, prices a little bit higher. But then you, uh, you look at December corn at 505 and a quarter, July wheat at 581 and uh, uh and, and I guess you have some of the same drop off pattern with, again, part of July corn is what I meant to say. July corn at 581 and a quarter, September corn 506, Dece at 5, 505. So from old crop summer highs, we're basically moving down now to about $5 around the harvest time frame. But, but again, we're, uh, we're, uh, we're still early in, in the season to, as, in terms of wondering where things are going. You know, and, and uh, in terms of the cash prices, uh, around the state and I think that's the real story in fact if, if I'm thinking that if if uh, our Kansas producers producers beyond Kansas are wondering where prices might go if, if uh, and of course the sentiment on the selling side would be to the higher side I, I think we'll probably see the first signals of moving us higher coming out of out of the cash markets in terms of stronger basis for instance since we're talking about wheat um, so much at this time you have uh, uh, cash prices current cash prices for for wheat and Colby at 822 the new the new crop at 815 uh, basis around, around 30 35 under uh, a little higher in Salina at 858 uh, about a level basis uh, 8, 856 in Hutchinson 847 in Topeka 829 in in Columbus and the new new crop bids a little just just a few cents lower than that Al- although uh, in in Garden City you have new crop bids equal to the cash price so interesting and of course that's one of the roughest areas that where the crop damage is, has been seen so overall even with prices down 28 27 28 cents we still see cash prices in, in, in the wheat market uh above eight dollars healthily in, in most areas so it's a real conundrum I, I think over the last week we've seen big run-ups we've seen drop-offs that as the uh, as the market has tried to digest this this news the the overall pi- picture i think in the wheat market uh is still hinges on on uh very very slow exports. So the, the demand side weak in terms of uh, of hard red winter wheat production. Question on hard red spring in terms of planting. Soft red looks pretty good, but but uh, you're 
and to balance in balancing the supply and demand factors that are affecting the wheat market, we are uh, our, our focus is on the production side. The market's focus is on production and 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 demand, and the the, the weakness in demand is 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 uh, uh, is offsetting some of the the market optimism, market price optimism that would come from uh, from uh, uh, the. Uh, 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 short, short, short supply situation. I would say, uh, and you look at the cash prices for corn. Uh, we we uh, have in mind. We remember uh, prices at uh, again fifty to a dollar, fifty cents to a dollar higher. So no doubt, when uh, when ag producers are, are looking at harvest prices, let's say in the Garden City area at five sixty six, they're they're comparing that to the uh, to seven dollar cash and that so that's a quote disappointment to them uh the, the you do see a 511 new crop bid in colby's uh, current bid cash 636 a similar drop off and from salina current cash 621 new crop bid 486 501 in hutchinson new crop bid for 648 in in hutchinson uh for for current cash and then a, a pretty similar situation in columbus uh, down in the southeast corner so um corn market uh not worried greatly yet about about planting issues that that are that have occurred up in are, are occurring up in the northern corn belt, uh, so we're we're, we're not uh, not in a panicky mode yet. Uh, still still uh, weather issues to deal with all summer, but but it seems that we have now taken the the narrative view that that we're anticipating. A, a good crop, a sizable crop, something along the lines of what the USDA said, which I, you and I have talked about. That's awfully high uh, in, in terms of yields and, and production. So, but but that right now seems to be the narrative thought in the market. Uh, sorghum holding up decently. Uh, again, new crop bids all all running uh, from. Uh, about 456 up to 491 uh, for the 491 course in Southwest Kansas, uh, and with uh, current cash bids all all with positive basis running from uh, 583 to 605. So sorghum running decently. It's just interesting to me to watch the uh, how we must be seeing domestic usage of grain sorghum because uh, we still are running slow. Uh, Dramatically slower than what than the pace we'd need to meet the USDA's projections for for exports. So it just is what it is. On the soybean side, uh, new crop bids, uh, a fair number of bids now, uh, in say out in western Kansas, 1092, 1097 for for new crop. Uh, and you look at the cat uh, the uh, and more export oriented locations to the east from processor well that many more processors 1130 1136 1126 so uh, still profitable prices but but uh, compared to current cash markets at, at, of uh, 1260 to thir to over 13 dollars no, no doubt producers would be uh, disappointed with that but again just as with corn we're we're locking in this narrative belief narrative opinion of the market that that we have uh, sizable crops coming and that the supply demand balances in in the fall will will uh will supply demand balances will grow and they'll lead to lower prices so overall just a challenging situation and uh and for for where new crop bids are, are going and and uh, i guess i would still say that that as we we're, we're coming into the time of the mo most market volatility when you look at the the Current trends in in most of, in, in these markets in terms of weekly futures, we've we've kind of we've uh, uh, I, I was going to say bid away, but we we are not accounting for market risk at the moment, and uh, so I, I I guess I'm uh, in the in a. Uh, in the next two, one to two, one to two to three months, I'll be really curious to see if any of that market risk comes about. And and frankly, we'll need some of that to have new crop bids uh, uh, start to uh, re-energize. I guess I guess and move back to the higher side. And Dan, these past few days, we've had Romulo Lovato come on and talk about what they're seeing on the Wii Tour, and you brought it up also before we started this conversation, which if people want to hear Romulo's update on the wheat tour from the past two days, you can go on agtoday.net and find it there. But you mentioned that it was kind of contradictory from what Kansas was thinking versus what the USDA was thinking for what the harvest will be. 
The uh, USDA numbers were uh, uh, projected at, at 191 million bushels for Kansas, and the re wheat tour came out with 178. That actually the the uh, yields uh, that the USDA projected were for 29 bushels per acre, and the the, the tour uh, projected 30. But the real issue ha has to do with harvested acres. I. Uh, I, I don't envy Romulo's job <laughs> to try to to try to foresee where we'll end up once we actually pull combines in, in into the fields and to try to balance the number of fields that have been uh, been released have been uh, um, sprayed tore up to go to an, an alternative crop we, we've just got we have a, a huge question out, out there so I I I think it's kind of a given that the yields will are, are, are lower. I think that was seen in the fields we have, but but uh, where we end up on the acres and how that'll drive that final number is 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 pretty important. So if, if we just take that that difference, you know, it, it's it's uh, from 191, 191 million bushels down to 178, and take that back into the into the U.S. wheat supply demand balance sheet, you can say, well, it's only 13 million bushels that 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 are the difference, but the, the the number of the USDA projected 556 is a is the low lowest in several several years. So that would take take us down closer to, to well it'd be below 550 down to closer to 540 stocks to use pro, would be taken all else being equal taken down below 30 percent and uh, you're starting to to buy at least as economists think of markets you're starting to to come into a situation where that eight dollar price projection that the usda came out with for, for this coming marketing year uh for 2000 the 2000 uh 23 24 year probably would be half would have to be raised but but again i as you and i talked about earlier shelby i, I think the issue will be uh it'll be a cash market driven issue you'll have to have people come uh, buyers, export buyers come into our market, start to try to extract out of storage what what uh, what wheat that can't be gotten, and uh, the narrowing of the basis then probably would be the, the the thing that would shake 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 the futures market or gain their attention enough to start to bid up and and to to see some price improvement. But uh, again, we'll so so I, I know we've got this information out here. The proof will be. In the, with the combines <laughs> in, in terms of what we actually see harvested. And, and then we'll look at that number and see, see where that comes in and affects the balance sheet down the road. If, if it's 25, 30, 40 million bushels or less, that, then, you've, then you've come in and you've really affected supply demand balances and, and the, uh, the market and the USDA would have to, have, have to come back and reassess where they're at uh, price projection wise. So definitely just waiting on what that combine tells us when we enter that field in time for soybean harvest and see what happens and kind of see where the estimates correct. Well, we're waiting for we're, every one of these harvests for that when wheat harvest coming up quick here. Then, uh, and, and it'll be the same story again for uh, for for all the feed grains and oil seeds, as as you've said. So, Dan, I appreciate you taking the time to give us a grain market update. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Shelby. That was K-State Grain Economist Dan O'Brien with a grain market update for this week. If you'd like to find his report, we'll link it today. We'll link it in today's show notes, which can be found on acttoday.net. We're cutting to a short break now, but we'll be back with more ahead on Agriculture Today. <music> 